Diagnexia Case 5. The clinical history in this particular case was of a 53-year-old male who presented with a chronic blood-stained cough with concomitant loss of weight. He had a history of long-standing alcohol abuse and this was associated with malnutrition. On examination, the patient was wasted, malnourished and dyspneic. Chest x-ray revealed multiple cavities, especially in the right upper lobe, and there was also evidence of tuberculosis. A right upper lobectomy was performed. The gross findings of the specimen showed a bronchiectatic lung lobe riddled with multiple cavities, the largest of which measured 3.4 centimeters. Within the cavities, necrotic material was identified. The surrounding lung parenchyma displayed fibrosis and scarring, and there was no obvious active tu tuberculosis noted. This is a low power magnification of the contents of one of the cavities, and you can see that the outer rind is formed by acute inflammatory exudate. There is a compressed necrotic zone sandwiched between the acute inflammatory exudate and obvious fungal elements which are seen centrally. Under higher magnification, one can see these brown pigmented fungal elements, both spores as well as hyphal forms. The hyphal forms are clearly septate and vary in size and shape. The more degenerate ones appearing slightly bloated and devoid of septi. The Spores are also variable in size and shape and deeply pigmented. Also noted are remnants of conidiophores, and these are the heads of a conidiophore that have been decapitated and are somewhat degenerate. But one can identify conidia peripherally, uh, underlying metulae, as well as phyllides which give rise to the conidia. A central sp space is noted and this corresponds to the vesicle. When intact, this represents the conidiophore. The diagnosis in this particular case is that of Aspergillus niger, colonization of bronchiectatic cavities. Aspergillus is a fungus and is the genus that contains approximately 185 species. It is a filamentous fungus or a mold. It is ubiquitous and seen worldwide. It has a predilection for dead leaves, decaying vegetable, compost piles, soil, drainage storage units, and tends to grow on dried fruit, dried nuts, and indeed even polyester. The species that are most implicated in infectious disease um, affecting humans are Aspergillus fumigatus, Flavus, Nidulans, and Niger. The modes of infection are either through ingestion of contaminated food products or by inhalation. Patients that are most at risk are immunocompromised from a variety of causes such as HIV or organ transplantation. Aspergillus causes a wide spectrum of disease ranging from non-infections through to invasive forms. The first is allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis which is an allergic sort of response to aspergillus and results in wheezing and coughing. This is not a true infection per se but an allergic response. Similarly, another allergic response is seen in allergic aspergillus sinusitis, where the patient presents with stuffiness and congestion of the nasal sinuses. An aspergilloma is colonization of a pre-existing cavity resulting in a fungus ball. This tends to be localized, non-invasive, and does not spread. The fourth form is chronic pulmonary aspergillosis, again, characterized by cavities and fungal balls. 
The invasive form of aspergillus leads to blood dissemination and a systemic disease. Cutaneous aspergillosis results from any breach in the skin, from surgery, trauma or burns, and local aspergillus infection is present. As regards aspergillus niger, some of the more recently described strains of aspergillus niger have been classified as aspergillus brasiliensis. It is the most prevalent strain in the environment. It is also septate, like aspergillus fumigatus, and is a biseriate fungus. It is characterized by its tolerance of extremes of temperature, so both cold as well as heat, and it tends to survive equally well in the extremes. It can grow in any environment. It is an opportunistic fungal infection, but it infrequently causes human disease. In the side-by-side -side comparison of the two species, there are clear points of similarity and overlap, but there are also clear points of distinction. Aspergillus niger is called a biseriate fungus because it has two layers as opposed to Aspergillus fumigatus, which is a uniseriate um, fungus because it has one layer. The additional layer seen in Aspergillus niger is a metulae layer. So taking it in order, the most peripheral um, form of the fungus are the conidia, which are produced at the ends of these finger-like projections called phyllides, which arise from the metulae and within the center is a vesicle. The vesicle is borne by a hyphal form called a stipe, and collectively the vesicle bearing the metulae, phyllides, and conidia, together with the stipe, form the conidia 4. And the conidia 4 is borne by a hyphal form, or a foot cell, or a stolon. Similarly, Aspergillus fumigatus has a foot cell or stolon and conidia fours, a stipe and a vesicle. But clearly you can see the absence of a metulae layer and the phyllides bear the conidia only on the superficial two thirds of the surface of the vesicle. Moving to the life cycle of Aspergillus, it is an asexual life cycle which allows it to propagate much more readily. The conidia disperse and at temperatures of 25 to 40 degrees Celsius, they then germinate into vegetative cells. The vegetative cells then transform into hyphal mycelia and by a process of dichotomous branching at 45 degrees, which is highly characteristic of Aspergillus species, they form aerial hyphae. The aerial hyphae then bear the conidia fours, which range in size from 300 to 400 microns. The conidia fours then develop an apical swelling, forming the vesicle, as I demonstrated in the previous graphic. And these vesicles range from 30 to 75 microns in diameter. The vesicles then develop primary sterigmata, which give rise to the metulae. The metulae then bear phyllides, and at the ends of the phyllides are the conidia. Another characteristic feature is the presence of oxalate crystals in aspergillosis. Oxalate crystals are seen in both Aspergillus niger and Aspergillus fumigatus, but is most frequently seen in Aspergillus niger infections. Aspergillus niger release oxalic acid as a fermentation product or mycotoxin, and this is formed as a byproduct of the tricarboxylic cycle by enzymatic hydrolysis of oxaloacetate. And this then precipitates as calcium oxalate within the tissues by reacting with tissue fluids and or blood. The oxalic acid itself is toxic and causes damage to the local tissue as well as blood vessels. Although calcium oxalate is not always detected, its presence is considered 
very characteristic of an Aspergillus niger infection, and it is incumbent on the pathologist to uh, search for uh, oxalate crystals when you see Aspergillus niger infections. And in fact, many of the pulmonary oxalosis cases have had or do have a current infection with Aspergillus niger. The presence of melanin within fungi serves as a protective one from ultraviolet irradiation, increases in temperature, a high salt content, especially in times of drought, oxidative stresses, enzymatic digestion, and indeed it helps the fungus escape host immunity, thereby contributing to the fungal virulence and pathogenicity. Melanin is distributed within the cell wall of the fungus and hence is extracellular. Three types of melanin pigment are found in fungi, DHN or dihydroxynaphthalene, pyomelanin and eumelanin. DHN is the most frequently encountered melanin pigment in Aspergillus and is also present especially in Aspergillus niger. The melanin distribution is different between Aspergillus niger and Aspergillus fumigatus. In Aspergillus niger, both the hyphae as well as the conidia are pigmented, whilst in Aspergillus fumigatus, only the conidia are pigmented. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of Aspergillus fumigatus and Aspergillus niger. Clearly, the Aspergillus niger on the right is pigmented and characteristically so. However, the morphology of both can be seen to be very similar with the hyphal forms showing septation, as well as dichotomous branching at 45 degrees, which is most evident in the Aspergillus fumigatus example. So what are the take home points from this particular case? Both Aspergillus niger and fumigatus can be black brown in color. Fumigatus tends to be more greenish in appearance, but the conidia can also be black. Aspergillus niger and fumigatus can be separated on the basis of their structure and the melanin distribution in that Aspergillus niger, the hyphal forms, as well as the conidia have pigmentation, and clearly a greater degree of pigmentation would indicate Aspergillus niger. The presence of melanin in these fungi is to serve as a protective function and is related to the virulence of the fungal organism. An additional point to look for is oxalate crystals, both admixed with the fungal organisms as well as in the adjacent tissue. Oxalate crystals indicate an Aspergillus infection, especially that with Aspergillus niger. Aspergillus niger is an uncommon colonization organism within lung cavities, and this is an example of such a case.